Check this out guys, generative AI tools powered by the new Adobe Firefly video model are coming soon to Premiere Pro. Take a sneak peek at Object Edition, Object Removal, and Generative Extend. Uh, among other things, this is a big deal for a couple of reasons. We've seen a lot of generative AI video tools so far made by small companies. Small startups trying to gather a new user base. Premiere Pro already has a massive user base. So when Adobe drops these tools, they kind of set the stage for the rest of the ecosystem. But before we dive into this, I do have a quick word from our sponsor. As someone who is constantly investigating and testing out the latest in AI technology, online security is definitely a priority. And who better to help me out with this than NordVPN, today's sponsor. NordVPN not only encrypts your internet connection, but maintains top speed while doing so. It's not just about security though, it's also a great tool if you're into AI tech. Because if you want to access geo-restricted content, which unfortunately a lot of new AI tools are geo-restricted, NordVPN has your you are back by allowing you to tunnel through and connect to those countries where the AI is unblocked. And here's the best part, NordVPN is offering an exclusive deal just for the MatVidPro community. You can head over to nordvpn.com slash matvidproai and you get a discount with four extra months for free. It's even risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee, so the link for that will be in the description below. Whether you're trying to get access to the latest in AI, or you just want to keep your internet data secure, NordVPN absolutely has as your back. Grab this deal while you can, and let's get into the rest of today's content. Let's jump in here and take a peek. Adobe is using the power of generative AI to deliver the most advanced and precise editing tools ever in Premiere Pro. Let's take a look at some features coming soon powered by our new Adobe Firefly video model that'll transform how editors work. One common editing challenge is finding something in a shot you need to add or replace. The Object Edition feature in Premiere Pro, combined with Adobe's Firefly video model, lets you add or change objects in footage with a text prompt. Make a selection, write a prompt, and add anything you can imagine. These diamonds were created by the Firefly video model currently in development. And not only can you add objects, but you can easily remove them too. Object removal with AI-based smart masking makes selecting and removing objects across frames quick and precise. Here, this distracting utility box is removed with Firefly. Remove unwanted props, crew, or gear, or copyrighted elements like brand logos. And with Premiere Pro, all your edits are non-destructive, so you can always get back to your original footage. When your clip is too short and you want to hold on a shot or a character for an extra beat, Generative Extend intelligently adds frames with Firefly, extending your footage, so you have the exact media you need. Like here, where we extend this shot of the woman a few frames. As we continue to innovate, we're committed to transparency through the use of content credentials. Now coming to Premiere Pro, so you always know whether AI was used in the creation of the media you're viewing. We can't wait to bring these Firefly-powered video editing workflows to Premiere Pro later this year. And there's more. We're excited to share our explorations around giving editors the choice to use models that work best with their footage. Here are some early examples of how third-party generative AI models could look within Premiere Pro, like Pika, powering generative extend to make a scene flow better. From OpenAI, here's an example of their Sora model, currently in early research, generating B-roll for any scene. Through simple text prompts, Sora creates variations for you to choose from. Here's the same use case now using Runway AI's video model, generating a new video clip and adding it to the timeline in a snap and content credentials coming to Premiere Pro this year will always make transparent whether AI was used and what model was used in the creation of media. To recap, revolutionary features like Object Add, Remove, and Generative Extend, powered by the new Adobe Firefly video model, are coming to Premiere Pro. And we're excited to show early research explorations with our friends at OpenAI, Runway, and Pika, so editors have the freedom to use the best model for their project. It's Adobe Premiere Pro, supercharged by AI. 
Good lord. Okay, we're gonna go through this, but I honestly don't know how Adobe has managed to do this. So not only are you getting tools in Premiere Pro that allow you to replace things magically, remove objects magically, you get all of the models. You get Sora, which is not even released. I mean, people will jump on this just to try to get access to Sora. Runway ML, which is kind of the OG first legit video generation model, and then Pika Labs, which in my opinion is a little bit better than Runway ML right now. So you just get to decide which model you want to use for which task, which will result in the best creation process without having to pick between all these little startup companies or these new models. It's interesting. It's an approach that I think works, and I don't know how they've managed to coerce everybody into allowing this. Adobe's got deep pockets and a massive customer base, so... I do have lots of things to point out about this, though. First up, let's talk about the integration directly in Premiere Pro. I don't even use Premiere Pro, but... Yeah, for a feature like this, I would consider getting it for sure. And I'm not a huge fan of Adobe, to be honest. Especially those subscription plans, they annoy me. But, you know, this is kind of an unbeatable feature, more or less, where you can just sort of highlight something and then replace it with a prompt very quickly. And this is the Adobe Firefly model, by the way, that's being used. This is not Sora, this is not Runway, this is not Pika. This is just their Firefly model, which honestly, at least in this example, does a pretty impressive job at doing the diamonds there, although it does just look like a static image that was placed inside, if I'm going to be honest. So I don't really know how their generative AI model works, but in that use case, it works. Very specific use case. You'll take note here that this is exactly the same solution that they tried to do with Adobe Generative AI in Photoshop. And personally, as a longtime user of that very feature, the generative fill feature in Photoshop, yeah, it's a pretty good solution. It works well. I mostly use it just to extend images, though, for thumbnails, of course, because that's what I create. But if I was using this for video work, short films, etc., I absolutely would be doing some object replacement or background removal. I grew up making budget short films, so I can say that these use cases, I mean, they're real, for sure. There's a lot of use cases where you just don't have any props. You have an image in your head of what something will look like, and you just can't get it to that exact image and yeah this this is a game changer for sure now i will say this object removal i think it's going to be a little bit more difficult than they make it appear in this ad see in this ad they have it just go down here click this magic little button and you can highlight any one of these objects and this object selection might work okay but let's say we want to click on this object and then remove it as they do in the ad now it does get removed but you'll notice you can see where it was at a first watch you might not really notice it but it definitely bothers me that these lines aren't very consistent and it's it's just kind of not perfect filmmakers even small ones are going to be a little bit peeved by that so the way that I see this feature is more or less as a last resort rather than something that you can use reliably all the time. And sure, in this situation, yeah, it works completely fine because we have a completely blank white wall. But most of the time, that's not the situation you're going to be dealing with. Because this is, let's be honest, not a very realistic scenario. In reality, you'd probably be able to remove this sign quite easily. So unwanted prompts, again, this one you guys probably didn't even see because my head was blocking it. But yeah, they have this little, you know, cord hanging out in the background here. That's a complete accident, or that would be a complete accident in a real film set. So they just remove it. Quick and easy solution. This is more or less a flawless implementation, although maybe you can see a little bit of weirdness over here. I say that's a that's a great use case. This is okay. Again, this is probably using their Adobe Firefly video model, which appears to do like an image and then map it out into the scene. But I, I still wouldn't say that this is great because you can just tell it's an AI generated watch. You wouldn't want to use that for a professional use case. I'd still say this shot is better because, well, it just looks more like a real watch. <laughs> In this situation here, they do something pretty awesome, which is add this tie-in and the time. I gotta say, it looks pretty damn good. But this is something that we saw from Adobe quite some time ago, months and months ago, this technology where you can add a tie-in, for example, and that already looked good back then. So that's just sort of us seeing something that we saw a few months ago, but now we know where it's going to come in Premiere Pro. So now they also talk about continuation of a shot for an extra beat. And this, again, as someone who has had the experience of doing budget filmmaking yeah, this is something that you need sometimes. It's nice to have. And again, I don't know how I feel about this because 
well, yes, you get to choose between any of the models, Adobe Firefly, Pika, Runway ML, even OpenAI's Sora, let's say. Even in this ideal scenario, it sort of just holds it for a beat, and like, you can see the transition between the real footage and then the AI-generated footage. The models just aren't really good enough yet to sustain this sort of a workload, let's say. It's just... It's very noticeable, it's very noticeable. Maybe if you combine it with like a blur out effect or something you could get away with it, but it's just not working for me. And obviously right here is sort of the big reveal that they're going to be working with OpenAI to bring Sora into <laughs> Premiere Pro. And as you can see, this model, well, it's quite a bit different than Pika Labs or Runway ML or even the Adobe Video model because it's just so much more, there's so much more going on here. And I mean, this I would say is usable for a short film. I think Sora is that high of a quality, at least from what we've seen so far. So this is very, very much exciting. Probably the most exciting thing of them all. Just the, the ability, the chance to use this magic mystical model. But that's how it feels right now. And even I want to point out here, they show off using Runway ML to add a clip in. Yeah, they added it into the timeline, but let's be honest, this just does not look quality for a short film. Maybe if you're doing a YouTube video, right, that makes sense, you know, have some B-roll generated by AI, no one's really gonna get fussy about that, but if you're doing a short film, you're telling a story, that is distracting. Look at those little dials there, those gauges for the car, it looks, it looks AI generated. So again, I don't know about adding entirely new shots, it really seems like you should be using the AI, at least in Premiere Pro right now, for emergencies, unless it's Sora, where you're doing some object removal maybe in the right circumstances. So yeah, I think it's worth now talking and getting into what this actually means. What is the true effect of Premiere Pro getting all of these massive generative AI tools? Well, first of all, it tells us that OpenAI, Runway ML, and Pika Labs see that their value does not come in the actual user interface that they've built for interacting with the AI tools because, well, Premiere Pro is a direct replacement for all of that. They see that the value of what they have truly is inside of the models, and while the models are not great yet, they will get great. I mean, within one, two, three years, they're going to be, you know, a couple fold better, and they will be able to do things like continue your shot in a way that you can't tell it was continued, or better object replication, better object addition, etc., etc. Now, the models aren't there yet, so for the meantime, the short-term micro-distance, I'd say, that they're only useful in the emergency circumstances or for, like I said, making YouTube videos, not necessarily the real deal short film use case. However, I think, at least for now, there is something that Adobe is missing out on, and that is, from the ground up, AI generative thinking. They're taking their current tools and applying generative AI to them, instead of creating a brand new set of tools from the ground up that is built around generative AI. I am firmly in the camp that says, hey, we have new tools, while there might be things we can learn from our old tools that never had the experience of being developed while generative AI was around, it is crucial that we apply some out-of-the-box AI-first thinking and really build some new tools for accomplishing tasks like movie creation. I really don't know if Adobe knows that. I mean, I don't know if they're, they could be working on some AI-first video creation app, but for now it seems like they're trying to just add the power of generative AI into their current day tools. And this is where I want to bring things around contextually to LTX Studio. Not too long ago you did a video on this app right here, LTX Studio. This is an AI-first rethink of how we create stories or short films. And again, the AI models are far from perfect, so this is not usable in the same way that maybe some of those Premiere Pro tools are today because the models aren't good enough for ground up creation, but they have a head start in a different scenario for when those tools or models are good enough because this creates the story overview, locks in our casting all AI generated characters that can be sw face swapped right away or clothing style changed right away. It's going to go ahead and build all of our shots and our whole story for us with AI that can then be modified and edited by us. We can change shot type on the fly, we can change how much motion there is on the fly, we can change the lighting per scene, the weather per scene, etc, etc. And you know, this approach is quite a bit different. It 
uses the capabilities of the AI in its design. So this is a lot more AI first and thus when the models get better will be more user friendly and perhaps more effective than Premiere Pro in one, two, three years. I really do think that Adobe will be shooting themselves in the foot if they don't build something that is from the ground up AI first. Because theoretically right now, they've taken away the competition of OpenAI, Runway ML, and Pika Labs on that front. So at least for now, it's going to be Premiere Pro with all of those tools in those traditional settings versus LTX Studio, which is this from the ground up AI first creation process. The models aren't good enough yet for LTX to dominate, but like I said, I really think we're only one, two, three years away from that. Let me know what you guys think about this. Again, it really hits close to home for me and I really do care about this stuff because I love video creation, no doubt. This is why I'm here and I'll be very, very intrigued and excited for when this comes out, especially because I want to try Sora so bad. Oh yeah, and by the way, we don't really get a release date for this at all. They just say, hey, take a sneak peek at all these things we're working on. It's coming soon. We don't know when. I assume that means this year because we still have quite a long ways to go through 2024 so I'm expecting this year. Oh and I will mention the content credentials here I do want to make a note about that. I think that for the meantime that is a pretty decent solution for dealing with AI generated content. People want to know when AI was used in the content they're watching so I think for now that's a decent solution but in the long term again I don't think it's going to work at a macro scale when these models get ridiculously good and even more powerful. But thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you in the next one. More exciting AI news coming up shortly. Goodbye.